So let's start with a bit about you, Liz. So you're so you used to be an actress. Yeah, I used to, I I studied the first thing I studied was music first, and it was funny enough. It was in the same school as as Philip studied, but we never met in school, and we actually have some friends in common from that time but we never met in school and then I went to Europe and studied um, scenic arts which are like all the arts that are performed on a stage so theater and um, clown and uh, a bit of cinema as well and then I came back and studied TV here in Mexico yeah and then <laughs> I've done a lot of studying, like I like to study. <laughs> <laughs> and then I studied uh, core energetics. I started to get more into that. And that led me to circling. And I'm, now I'm here. <laughs> Beautiful. And so you're a facilitator on Circle Anywhere. Uh, mm -hmm. And you're also married with Philip, who is your who is also a facilitator and you have a child together mm -hmm. yeah do you want to share a bit about that or? about uh our life together or what 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 do you mean facilitating together yeah yeah so we came uh we came together into the practice like um we recently met we were like two months into the relationship or three months and then he met your jordan mm -hmm. in in an integral theory event and then he, when he came back he was like oh i met this guy and he's super cool and he's writing a book and he sent me the draft and the book is super cool and then he invited him jordan to our home in mexico city to have a circling event he was like he just moved in with me and he was like uh do you would you like to have this event and i was like i didn't know what circling was but i was like super into philip in that moment because <laughs> we were like just starting I was, and i was like yeah sure this is your home and invite whoever you want and so jordan came in and we did a little weekend at my, in my living room and that was my, our first, both of us, our first uh, approach to circling and was very soft. Like I, I didn't, to be honest, I didn't even pay attention to what was happening because I was hosting. It, it was in my house. And then I have this thing about me where I, if I have people in my house, I need them to be like, well, um, how's the word in, in English? Like, um, yeah, like I'm, I'm always like, uh, what do you need? And then food and the space is clean. So I was in that and I was not paying much attention to what was happening. So I didn't know. <laughs> I, <laughs> like Phil was like, this was great, right? And I'm like, yeah, sure. This was cool. <laughs> <laughs> And then Jordan invited us to, he said like, you know what, guys, you should come to the, do the SIS program, the, the training program to become facilitators. I think it will be great. And then, yeah, we went mainly just because we liked Jordan, like a little bit, like we didn't even know what we were getting into. And it was really strange because we didn't have the money to do it. We were getting married and uh, Jordan was like, yeah, come. And uh, somehow we made it. And uh, it was pretty intense. It was pretty intense. I was about to leave that. I was like, this is bullshit. This, this program is bullshit. Like you guys don't know what you're doing. I was really angry. <laughs> But then, like, something happened where I became aware that if, if one of us was going to make it, it had to be both of us. Like, um, I think I did feel the power of the practice and the, the possibility of it to be very life-changing 
and I got scared. I was like, if I leave, we both have to leave. If, if you stay, we both have to stay. Because this is gonna, not going to be cool, good for our relationship. But we, one of us leaves and the other stays. I, I already, like, I don't know why. Because nothing was happening really. But I had that, that feeling that this is going to be a deep journey. Mm. And, um, and we have to do it together. So we decided to stay. And I was not at all convinced about it, the practice. But then, well, now I'm here, <laughs> I lead it, and this is my life. Like for the past five years, this is all I do. I quit my job, I moved to another city and circling became my life. This is what I do. But my, like, my entrance to circling was not smooth at all. I, I didn't trust the practice much in the beginning. Mm. And then it, it, yeah, then I started to, but it was, I guess it was about, I didn't trust myself back then. Yeah. And then I started to feel into that and, and start to feel into the power of the practice. And yeah, I surrendered to it. And when you say it's your life, are you, are you like, um, in, implanted your circling uh, practice into your daily life like how, how does it look yeah exactly like I think for me it started with um, this being my my work like uh, I learned about circling and pretty quickly after we ended our SIS we started to facilitate so in the beginning, it was me just like sharing the practice. But then slowly, slowly it became more and more, um, my words in English sometimes, like um, it become part of my, my way of being more mm. and more. Like, um, yeah, through those, the process, like because, even when I'm leading, I'm always in the practice. So it's a process for me as well. I'm always learning. I'm always um, finding new stuff. I'm always going through process and journeys with people and with myself. So yeah, like I went through a lot of stuff like grief and joy and pain and shame and um, a lot of stuff. And then I don't know how, like, it's like the practice started to unfold me, if that makes sense. So, yeah, there were little ways where I started to apply it into my life. Like when I, I would get like doubty, like I had, I had these uh, doubts about um, my work, for example. I had a job and it was like, I don't know if I like this job. So I would use the practice to get more clarity into where I should go or in my relationships with my, like my, my closest relationships are the ones that are always more triggering to me. <laughs> and then I think I'm still in, in that process, but I, I, st I start to apply that as well. Like if I feel triggered with my mom, I can like just like take a moment and be with the trigger. And um, sometimes it's, um, Sometimes I manage to not act on my trigger with her and sometimes I don't, but like, I think bringing more awareness into my own life, my process, my body, my feelings, my thoughts, it's um, how the practice start. I started to live the practice, not just like yeah. teach yeah. it or, yeah. Do you have ideas of what you love about this practice? Because you've done like other stuff, like. Yeah, yeah I I think um, one of the things I love the most about this practice is um, the way that beauty always comes up in connection, like no matter what we're with, like. I could be 
with a lot of anger or like grieving or like even with my triggers when I don't like someone or I think I don't like someone. And, but then at the end, once I connect like deeply or fully with, with someone else's reality or world, there is a way that I always can see beauty, like that beauty. And that for me is, it's amazing. I'm like, um, I imagine that if we could all see that, like how everybody is really beautiful deep down, like how am I beautiful even in my worst moments? That could be a game changer in the world, I guess. So that's, I'm, of course, I'm just sharing you my perspective of the practice, like what comes up for me, but like that's one of the things I like about this practice, like just this feeling of connection and like spaciousness and also how I can, like just the permission or on having the space to be myself without or with the fears that I have uh, of judgment or whatever fears I have in my mind, that, like that, that space is pretty... Oh, yeah, it's just like refreshing for me, just having that that space in my life where I can just show up or not show up and no one is pushing me or judging me or asking me to be different or <laughs> like that. Those are the, the two main things I think that are that I like more about the practice. And then the way that it's always um, invite, like challenging me, like I'm always finding these little things in me like every time I feel like oh I, I think I got the practice like I know how it works there's always a moment where I'm like oh look at this little thing and like you're not seeing this little thing like how it's always showing me where I can um, where I can see more of myself that's also something I really like about it uh, how do I personally circle? That's a very good question because I think I don't like, I imagine that other people has a clearer sense of me than myself in that way because I'm just like, um, <laughs> I just do my thing, you know, like I just do it. And um, I don't think much about what I'm doing. I'm just like um, in the moment, just noticing myself and the others and sharing what I'm noticing and then opening to listen. And I don't, I wouldn't know what my flavor is myself, you know, like my eyes are too close to my face for me to see them. <laughs> <laughs> Something like that. I don't know. I have no idea. Yeah. I like hearing like being yourself and being open to hear says a lot to me yeah yeah just being aware of myself mm. and also I guess I'm always open to being shown more like even when I'm like I, I I'm not a person with strong ideas like that I'm like this is what I think and then like nothing can makes me change my mind I'm not like that at all so I'm always even when I think I know something I'm always open to that not being exactly as I think like to be surprised or to be like um, shown more than I already think I know or so yeah there's like a flexibility that I like to to always have that's, I guess it's part of my, my way. Right. What, what tip or advice would you give to a, a new circular right in front of you? Ah, the word, isn't it one of our principles that we're not supposed to give advice? <laughs> <laughs> right now you're like, <laughs> <laughs> no advice from me <laughs> I guess 
I guess I only can share the, the strongest thing I've learned is to trust myself. Trust my, like something that's beyond my mind that allows me to feel into what's best for me. Like to, how, like to take care of myself. And I have to be careful here because like sometimes I know I have ways uh, to deflect like when I feel uncomfortable, like I can have some um, parts of me telling me like, ah, oh, you should not be here. Like, let's go. Like, so like learning to listen when my intuition tells me like, this is how you take care of yourself, but you're not avoiding or, or deflecting or like, that's the process I'm in right now. Like just learning to take care of myself. And I think in this practice, that's very important. Like no one's gonna take care of me. I have to take care of myself and learn how to do that. Um, which books um, impacted you in your life and are still close to you? Yeah, I think, well, back in the day when I was uh, studying to become an actress and all that, I loved, um, I guess it, it's still connected. Like. I love fantasy and like other worlds and creatures and stuff like that. So I loved Greek mythology, for example, when I was studying theater and I had to read all these plays and they were, some of them were like really bloody and dramatic and some others were like really funny and just represented like the, the struggles of the people in that time. So those were kind of my favorites those ones and then like Spanish theater, like, um, uh, I don't know in English, but um, La Vida Sueño, things like that. Like, and uh, I love, I also like Shakespeare a lot, like this darkness of the human uh, spirit. And, and then um, uh, after I was in, in theater school, I started to get a, a, a lot of, in, interested a lot in like a young adult fantasy stuff. And my favorite one that I still love is Harry Potter. Mm -hmm. like I just like love that story. I love that story. And so those are, that's a gender, a gen gender <laughs> that I love. And then I also like crime stories, like suspense thrillers and where the detective needs to figure out like what happened, who did it, like what, like the human psychology, like in its darkest moment, like um, I am really drawn to that, like just to figure like why is a person sometimes um, willing to go to the dark side and like uh, what happens in their mind and like human cruelty and human um, perversion, like that's, um, yeah, that's really interesting to me as well. Yeah, like what comes to me is like, how is it to, to, to be a mom and a searching facilitator? <laughs> oh God. Well, I think the practice has helped me a lot in this process of becoming a, a mom because I think motherhood is pretty intense like I love it like there's moments where I'm like in pure bliss and this human being is like I love my son more and more every day because he's super funny and he's like his own little person and but it's really um really intense and really difficult like the amount of energy and presence that a child requires and it's it's a lot and also like the the responsibility it's like i i'm not a person that liked responsibility a lot <laughs> like in my time i was really i've been, I, i'm a really free spirit so i had no problems in my past just leaving everything behind and going to india or going to spain or like and just like cutting my ties with my boyfriend and leaving my family like that's something that never was a problem for me. And now I have this child and I'm like, I, I, I went through a period where I felt really stuck. And I feel like, like, fuck, I just made myself a cage. 
with this child. Like there's no way I can just leave him and go do my thing. So yeah, it was like, I, I went through a period of a lot of grief and a lot of um, pain and a, like just losing my center and not feeling like I was not myself anymore. Like I didn't know pretty well what I was doing. And I, I, I like, I couldn't feel, I knew I loved that boy, but I didn't feel it like fully. And then the, the practice helped me a lot, a lot to just like not be with those feelings and not make them wrong or not dismiss them. Just like noticing like, yeah, like it seems like it's a major change. Like everyone tells you it's a major change, but like I didn't know it was like that. It was like feeling like I was dying, like I died. And then I don't know who am I anymore. So yeah, the practice has been a really good, like, like a really good thing for me to have in my life and also with my relationship with my husband and like how are we coping and then the the pandemic came like COVID came and now we're here at home with a child 24 7 and working and it's pretty intense pretty intense so um so for me to allow myself to feel my my darkest feelings like even when I feel like I don't want to be a mother anymore like I don't want this I feel trapped like just allowing myself to feel that then allows me to feel all the the other side like all the love and all the freedom in my choice like I chose this and I love this and like he's amazing and I cannot live without him anymore and and all of that so yeah, motherhood is a very intense chapter. <laughs> yeah. I'm grateful for for motherhood and for circling when while I'm doing this, trying to be a good mom. <laughs> yeah, I guess we could do a whole interview about this. <laughs> what? You can what? We could do a whole interview about just this. <laughs> yeah, it's a good topic. And I, I, I bet there's parents out there like really just surviving, surviving, um, being a parent in this pandemic and then with all the feelings of parenthood and uh, like, yeah, I guess a lot of people out there can maybe relate to this. And that's why I, I, do, I do believe that having a practice like this is important. Yeah. It's very important for us to cope and move forward, yeah. <laughs>